to aim accurately, I look straight down my cue to find exactly where the center of the cue ball needs to strike the object ball. And if I show you exactly where I'm aiming using a target in this box, you can see exactly where I'm aiming on this red. I tried this once before, but um, unfortunately the technology wasn't good enough. But now we've got cameras a little bit better now, so uh, you can see like on this black where we're trying to push the cue through to, so we're trying to push the cue through to that dot, and that pushes the center of the cue ball to that dot. And that's why we potted the black. If we can do that 20 or so more times, we should be able to have a hundred or so break, but that's getting a long way ahead of ourselves yet. So I'm getting this red out of the way early, it's stopping us splitting the uh, reds off the black. Just gone a little bit low there, one of a fraction higher. Oh no, we're okay. I thought it was going to be bridging slightly over the top of the red. We still are, but it's not really a problem. Looking to leave a good angle to open the reds now. So we want to go a little bit further than through than straight, or the normal angle on the black, which is about level with it. So we've just gone a bit lower than the black, and that gives us a good angle just to go into these reds. If we hit these at a good pace, nothing's going to go near a cushion. They're all going to be on. We just need enough to open them, but not too much. Ooh. Hit it a bit thick, and that's why we nearly missed the black. And uh, we didn't open them up very well. Now, I'm forced into playing the shot with a bit of side. So I've just got to judge the side spin here. So we did a good job of that. Which is a little bit diff different in terms of aiming and lining the shot up again. It just makes it a bit more complicated really, so we're just trying to hit this point again. We're hitting these reds again, just getting them moved nicely this time, I hope. Been very lucky there. Got all the reds open, but we should have been coming back on the same side of the table, but I've struck the cue ball a little bit too high. So I can just roll through top side of the blue now. If I pot this to the far jaw. There we go, so it went into the far If it went in the middle, I'd probably hit the blue. That makes quite a bit of difference in terms of angle. Now we've got four reds over here. These two top ones are the ones I kind of want to get rid of as quickly as possible. Not too bad. But I'm just going to use this opportunity to get in behind them. We're looking for the second red down in particular. Try to get on that in the middle pocket. Just nick the red, but it's gone perfectly. Just put a little bit too much pace in that, and we uh, hit the red. So I can run back out for the blue again. You can see exactly where I'm pushing my cue through to. Just hitting that point, pushing through to it. There we go. Now I'm going to use that top red next, I hope. Not a fraction too far. Should still be able to just get high enough that we can just get back on the blue again. You have to pop this blue into the left side of the pocket. You you struggle to do these things in the game if you're not playing confidently. But at the moment, it's it's absolutely fine. There's no pressure on, so we can just play this straight stun shot. Now we got rid of the uh, most awkward red, I think, already. One or two in the middle there will be uh, a little bit tricky, particularly the one uh, on the pink spot. That's the one that needs to go fairly soon. I can play for it now, but it's a little bit more risky than it needs to be from here. Because if I don't get on it perfectly, I'll end up on nothing. It's a bit of a silly thing to do from here. Got into that white a lot too much, actually. Not just a bit too much. <laughs> I should have been another about foot to the right side of the. Yeah, um, it's it's fine for, on this red though. Now I'm going to use right hand side to get uh, top side of the black. See where I'm aiming. See I'm pushing through. Ah. And when I said I meant up the table there, and I potted it in the wrong side of the pocket. It's not too bad. You can stun back into a similar area to before, just away from the pack. That will get us a nice opportunity of getting rid of that red. That opens up a lot more, most of the game actually. So 
so we're in a really good position here everything goes we've still got one red on the top cushion which i think we're getting rid of next i was trying to get rid of it the last time but i ended up on the wrong side of it the wrong side of the black anyway usually on the tv you won't see people playing these reds too happily but thankfully my pockets are a fraction bigger so it these shots aren't too much of a problem just go a bit too straight didn't want to be anywhere near this straight so you're gonna have to play this round two cushions again not too much of a difficult shot from here so you see where i'm aiming we're just looking to push through to there just do it in a nice pace yep used all of the pocket really but could have gone much better and we've got that red on the pink spot which i'm going to try and drop on absolutely perfectly in the middle pocket but if I don't get on it I've got that other red in the other side so we're trying to play on two different balls here so that's a very exact positional shot I've attempted to play there and it's come off perfectly this is why it's so important to have um, the weight of the table it's probably far more valuable than a lot of things because it allows you to make the game a lot easier so I'm just going to come back to roughly where my hand is gets us a good angle and we can play the, another red that's close to the pink spot next we're just using right hand side here to widen the angle I quite like this shot I know a lot of people it's not necessarily the shot they like playing the most but I just find it's a very easy way of uh, maneuvering the cue ball up the tape up the center of the table like that so we're just going to use the pink now as much as possible so keep on this side of it on this side of the pink, get as straight as possible. Nice angle to play for the one below. This is this is probably the bit of break building I find the easiest because we can now just run just the other side of straight on this red. So we just go just the other side of straight. That means we can come back for the pink roughly straight. That I mean, gives us that red over there. Possibly uh, just this, just keep this side of straight on the pink. And it um, makes everything a lot easier. So we're just going to keep this side of straight. Just could have gone a fraction further. I think we can, yeah. So we might have to change our mind slightly here, but there's always so many options with this type of thing. I think we can just about do it. I'm just going to roll it in. Yeah, so we're going to have, yeah. Shouldn't have done that. I knew that wasn't going to work, but it's not really too much of a problem. It's just, <laughs> you see such an easy shot and you want it to be there and it wasn't there. I played a shot that wasn't going to work where I finish about there on the red. I couldn't hit it that soft. So I can just come up for the blue. It's not going to be a difficult shot. It's going to be a simple shot to just drop up the table for the blue. If you don't over hit it. I said I had the weight of the table a second ago. It's all gone wrong since then. So I've managed to make this difficult and whenever this happens you just got to keep playing the shots, make the break as easy as possible and make sure you get give yourself as good a chance as possible to, to play and pot each shot. So we're playing that slow, I know the table's straight enough. If I was playing on a uh, table I was less familiar with there, let's just get rid of these reds, I'd have had to play that a bit harder. Now the shot I'm looking to play here is stay this side of the uh, black but go across the table and I'm not sure how much the top spin is going to affect it as it goes across here so might end up low might end up high hopefully we've got a good angle it's going to be low didn't wasn't 100% sure how that was going to come across but that I'm not going to complain about that so what we can do here is just run up nicely for the yellow so we're just going to look to get uh, just seeing the angles a little bit steeper than I thought. But it's okay, we've just got to be very, very careful to get the weight right. Got to get the right place across the table here. Might have slightly under hit it. No, that's good. That's pretty good. It felt like I under hit it a lot and I've under hit it by about a ball length. Some more reds. Good thing about this, I think I can just stretch and screw it back. I can. So we've just got to go um, straight as possible on the green. 
oh wow sometimes when you stretch like that you just get into it a bit too much first shot with a rest i think i don't think there was going to be one until that last one so we're just going to use the bolt cushion as much as possible to get a good angle so what's the angle going to be like so unfortunately my camera just ran out of battery i didn't notice it was actually that low so if you just want to assume that i miss then the next brown that's fine because i hate it when people put cuts and things like that because you, you never know what's gone on but i thought i might as well try and pot the last few balls that's where it ended up i think i was saying um that uh i don't remember what i was saying I, I thought i got it the line perfect but i actually went a bit too far but um either way gotta try and pot this pink now and uh, then we'll be on the black. I've missed it. Well, <laughs> that was probably because I waited 10 minutes. Well, that was a bit annoying that the battery ran out, but it did show us some quite interesting things. Like the reason I missed the pink at the end there is I looked like I was hitting it a tiniest bit thick. And you can actually see what happens with my cue, that I push it to the left as I go through to try and make the angle wider and end up straightening it up. Also, there was a number of other shots where I thought I was striking the cue ball in the centre, but on reviewing it, it turned out I was actually striking slightly to the left or the right, which could be why I missed the occasional shot. So all that's left to do before I charge the camera up is find Spencer, who's in Kalispell, Montana, which is there. And if you want to see more head cams of me attempting to clear the table, including one where I'm attempting to make a 147 maximum break, then have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.